Hello, and welcome to the first of several tutorials dealing with the new Super Mario DS level editor. Uh, this is going to run you through the basic functions of the editor, and nothing really too advanced. Those will come in later tutorials. So the first thing I'm going to do now is run the editor, open my ROM, and here we go. First window you'll notice is has, it has three tabs: level listing, ROM file browser, tools and options. You're probably not going to be messing with these too too much at first. Uh, later, I'll talk about what these do, what's in here, what all this stuff is. But you're not going to have to worry about that if you're just making levels. So you'll see the the uh, level listing here. You'll see the different worlds that you're probably familiar with if you played the game, and the different levels. What you'll notice is that for each one of these, there are different areas. Level one one has three areas, same with World 1-2. World 1-3 doesn't have any areas in it, and 1-5 uh, has two areas, 1-A has two areas, and Canon doesn't show any areas. The ones that don't show any areas actually have one area, they're just not listed. So, uh, first thing is to notice is that you have the world, and then the level, and then the areas underneath of it. Each area is like a sub-part of the level, so if in World 1 1 you go down a pipe and it looks like the underground level, but the top part looks like the grasslands, uh, those would be two separate areas. And I'll explain why here in a little bit. So let's go ahead and just open up Area 1 1. Area 1. So here's uh, the level. You're probably familiar with this. You know, we've all played it. And there it is all the way to the end. You have, you know, your tiles and your Goombas and everything like that. So let's look at the buttons first. First we have the save level button, which is obvious what that does. You've got the view mini map. Now down the here you've got a mini map. You can also open one up and have it floating in its own window too. As you pan around, you can uh, check out the rest of the level. You don't have to use the mini map to check out the, le the rest of the level. It's fast, but you can also uh, hold the right click button and pan and scroll like you do in Photoshop or anything else like that. Okay, uh, you have the next button over is the level configuration. This is a little bit complicated uh, for some of the, that information, but we'll talk about this in later tutorials. Uh, right now we've got your options, your time limit, what start entrance, we'll talk about entrances later, sound set, uh, and then a few different little options here. Uh, for your graphics, you can choose which tile set to use, so you, you know, your grassland, forest, you know, snow, you're probably familiar with all, what all these tile sets probably look like. Uh, you have different backgrounds that you can use and there's actually two parts to each background there's a far background that pans slowly and then a close background that pans quicker so you know we'll take a look at the back the back background you know and we'll look at the front front one so this one's gonna be in the back it's gonna pan slower than this one which is in front and it's gonna pan faster Uh, then you've got sprite sets. We'll talk about these later, but this is basically what kinds of enemies and kind of special events you can have in your level. So we're not going to change anything now. The next section is your editing tools. The first one is objects and sprites. So objects are the tiles that you see. You can see all these different kinds of tiles you can use over here. And sprites are things that are animated or do... Uh, have have functionality behind them, have code of some sort, you know, like these move across the screen, do do, do it like that, and Goombas run around. So these are sprites. These are static parts of the level. The uh, the bricks, the coins are actual objects, not sprites. Same with the pipes, everything like that. And we have entrances. Entrances are any spot that Mario can enter or exit the level sometimes he can do both with the level so the first entrance here is right here and this is where Mario starts the level uh, later in here we could probably find some entrances this is where Mario can go down a pipe you can see some of the the data here we'll talk more about entrances later but that's basically what they do and here's by the way the list of all of the entrances you have so you can skip through them like that without having to pan and find them. Next are paths. Paths are, uh, are, are very
very diverse in what they can do. They can control cameras depending on what is going on in the screen. For example, uh, some of the auto scroll levels you use paths to control where the camera pans around as you're going up and over hills and stuff like that. Uh, some platforms that, that take different paths, they'll use these paths. So I'll show you what one of them looks like. Just hit add path. We have uh, different nodes on this path. So the path starts at zero, continues on until the end, which is colored in red. And uh, these, like I said, these can be for all kinds of different things, you know. And we'll talk more about what paths can do later. Um, they're sort of a of a of a general tool for different different objects that you can use, uh, in, including uh, when you go into a pipe that's connected. So, say you have this pipe here, and it looks like this. You want Mario to be able to go into this pipe and come out this pipe. You have to use paths to control where Mario goes. Of course you can have you know your your pipes that uh that go like this, you know, pretend that looks looks like a normal pipe, but Mario will go down it, go to the right and go down. Paths control that. You know, so put one path about there and one down here. These aren't exact positionings, I'll show you how to position them correctly later, but Mario will be able to do that with these paths. Anyway, moving on, the next one over is progress path. There's only one of these per level or per area and you can see it starts here and they look exactly like the other kind of paths but you can't select these kind of paths while in progress path mode and the same vice versa you can't select these paths while in normal path mode so you can see this one starts here and continues all the way down here with this thick gray line here all the way to the end and what that that syncs up with is on the bottom screen of the DS when you're playing the game you can see where Mario is in relation to everything in the level, the beginning and the end of the level and so this tracks where the flagpole is and where Mario starts. The next one is views. Views are sort of like sub areas for an area okay that probably doesn't make a lot of sense right now but it will later basically Mario cannot exit this view uh, any sprites that exit the view disappear, they're deleted, they don't exist anymore. Uh, and the camera won't pan outside of the view. The view is everything that's part of this level. Now, you can have a little section of a level, like, let's just pull this down here. And you can have a second view. So I just uh, clone this view, I'll talk about cloning later and uh, so now we have a little subsection we probably want to make this a little bit smaller so here we go here's another section of a level now you can go from this level to here using entrances like I said earlier so you can go down this pipe and end up right here you know do whatever and this is totally separate from this. They're they're almost treated like they're separate levels within the same level. Okay. Um, we'll talk more about views later. You know, I, this is just an overview. So, and views have different kinds of values, which we'll go over later as well. But you know, you can change the music for the view. You know, oh, I want this view to have a desert music, but I want this view to have, you know, the uh, the castle music, whatever. So the next one is zones here is a zone it looks a lot like a view except it's green and it doesn't control the camera or anything like that what it does is it is it links up with certain sprites um, most notably the uh, Lakitu sprite when you put him down if there's not a view or a zone rather that, that links up with that Lakitu sprite he won't show up he'll only show up in his proper zone so you put a Lakitu in here and he will go all the way this far but once he hits this line he's gonna start to turn around same with over here, he'll turn around. Um, this also works for those bullet bills that shoot from off the screen, you know, that aren't being shot from an actual cannon, they're just coming in from off the screen. Uh, as long as Mario's inside this view, those bullets will start firing randomly at him. Um, there's other sprites that do that, like the sharks that just kind of show up randomly and, and various things. Here, there's actually a sprite 
two, number 264, which says increases the chance of drops on Mega Manic Ground Pound, Mega Mario Ground Pound. So inside this zone with this sprite, when Mario does the Ground Pound when he's Mega, more Goombas will fall down from the sky. So this is kind of a special sprite. We'll talk about what all of this is, why some of these are red, why some of these are black, why some of them have numbers, you know, what, what this, this stuff is. You know, we'll talk about that uh, probably in the next video. Um, so we talked about zones, and of course you have your undo and your redo, so, you know, I can, we all know what undo and redo does. Uh, here's a sprite finder where you can look for a sprite. You're like, I know I put a Goomba in here. You could type in the number for the Goomba, which I believe is uh, it's 148. So we'll do our sprite finder, search for 148, find next, and it'll automatically highlight the next Goomba it finds. So this is actually really useful for, say, sprite zero. No sprite zero is found, which is good because if you scroll up here, sprite zero is a crash sprite. You put a sprite zero in your level, the level will crash when it loads up. And obviously you don't want to do that, so let's go ahead and delete that. Uh, this is your zoom. We can zoom all the way into 800% or all the way out to 25%. There's 25% zoom or all the way into 8, 800%. So, I mean, that's that's a big, big turtle right there, right? Uh, I like to work you know around here I got a pretty high resolution on my monitor and you know so I like to zoom in um, the next option is edit tile set now this is a very powerful little sub tool that has been built into the editor uh, you can see all the different little tiles that come with the, the game or you know with the tile set that you're working with um, see even more stuff here you can import PNG files to change the graphics. You can export these graphics out, make slight modifications if you want, re-import them back in. Or you can export the tile set, which would bring along with different values. Like we click here, we see tile behaviors for different, uh, you know, different tile behaviors. You know, this one means slope. You know, and we'll talk about what all these different tile behaviors do, what your different options are later. Um, in fact, we'll talk about uh, editing the tile set probably as as its own video you know but you can import export you know other people will make tile sets post them online you can download their tile sets load it in not have to go through kind of you know in my opinion the grueling work of making your own tile set so let's go ahead and close that and we have some options reload the tile set uh, this is mostly for little glitches or bugs that will happen inside the editor use small block overlays so see down here you got the uh, the different you know what's in these bricks do this and it makes it smaller so you can tell that they're bricks or invisible bricks you know whereas when they're bigger it's kind of kind of hard to tell is that invisible brick or question mark block you can do that I personally never mess with it then you can delete all the objects delete all the sprites you know delete all the objects yes that delete all the tiles you know uh, I'm gonna go ahead and delete all the sprites are you sure yes now we don't have any sprites left all they were left with are entrances paths, zones, you know, stuff like that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and undo that so that I can show you more stuff. And then you can set a background here. Set background, remove background, move background. You can say set background and uh, choose any any JPEG. I actually, uh, let me see here. So uh, there he is. Now I can move move that background around or I can remove it that you know probably not going to use that too much I mean I guess if you're at school or you're at work or something you doodle down an idea for a level you can import that in you know use it as kind of a little template guide if you want I don't I don't ever really use that so uh, you can also actually do that if you're making a custom background and you want to see what it looks like in the editor before you go and jump into the game with it you can do that as well so that's uh, that's the overview of all the buttons, you know, what everything does. Like I said, we'll talk more in detail about everything else.